Welcome back, everybody. This is the weekly WP Roundup with BJ. That's me. And every Friday afternoon, we get together and we talk about the best news, the best tutorials, the best resources that were published this week about WordPress. So follow along with the links in the description. Make sure you click through and uh, let those content creators know that they're doing good stuff so that we can keep on doing this. Uh, feel free to throw any comments that you may have in the uh, comment section of this video. Uh, we uh, want to have this be a very lively show, a very active show. So if you have any comments about what's going on this week with you, uh, any questions about anything, feel free. We try to have a pretty good community here. So uh, uh, with that said, we tend to go through the news, the tutorials, and the resources in that order. And you can always find this stream on our archives on the YouTube and YouTube channel and Facebook page uh, after the stream is ended. So uh, let me check the comments. I'll probably get distracted by the comments at some point, so new newcomers uh, beware. But uh, I just want to say hi to everybody. Uh, I've seen a lot of people already in here today. Uh, Divi loves you too, Clark, on uh, uh, Facebook. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, everybody is coming in. Um, Oh, I'm sorry that uh, the UK is dark, wet, and cold. It's uh, it's wonderfully sunny and warm here, so uh, it's like the first time in months I can say that. So I hope everybody is uh, ha except I hope everybody except for Uncle Social is having a wonderful sunny day. Uh, I wish he was, but he's not. Um, so let's dig in. Let's get uh, get into the news today. I want to remind everybody that the Elegant Themes 11th anniversary sale is still going on. So you have five days to take advantage of this, and we have a 20% discount for all new members, uh, all existing members who upgrade, all new lifetime memberships. Basically, if you want to uh, to get Divi, right now is the time. There's not going to be another sale like this until at least Black Friday, so this is uh, this is really the uh, the best time to get it right now. If you're uh, on the fence, if you've been uh, wondering whether or not you should re up, you might as well uh, for twenty percent off. It is absolutely a great deal. So it will end in I think five hours and five days and ten hours, maybe the last time I looked. So you can check in there and watch the countdown and uh, see everything about it. So you can uh, make that decision. Just, uh, just please don't. Um, well, the link in there is completely wrong. Um, but it's elegantthemes.com slash 11th anniversary. Uh, uh, this is not one of the, I see on, on YouTube, I'm sorry, that the, uh, uh, Dave asks if uh, lifetime people get anything. Right now, this isn't one where we are doing any kind of giveaways with it. It is solely a discount, Dave. This is uh, a sale, a promotion for the anniversary. Uh, every Black Friday is when we tend to do the the giveaways and the, the bonuses for our lifetime members. So it's... Uh, so this one is just going to be the uh, discount. So you guys, uh, we, uh, no wonder we, <laughs> I got distracted by the comments. Uh, so you'll be getting stuff like that come Black Friday, but today just the discount. So hopefully uh, you can wait until then. And we always got all the freebies coming out too. So uh, the only other news this week that I really thought was worth mentioning was uh, that WordPress is officially has officially ended PHP support for 5.2 to 5.5. That means that the minimum required PHP version is 5.6. Um, a lot of people are already moving into 7. That's what's recommended and 7 and higher. But there are a lot of people who uh, there are a lot of people who aren't uh, running that. That there are some hosts that haven't updated. There are some people who haven't changed out just everything that they need to do. So uh, this is going to affect them. You probably have clients on a host that is not running 5.6. Somebody out there is. And that means that you're going to not, ha you're going to have plugins that are going to stop working. Um, as plugins start to show their minimum required level, it is going to be at least 5.6 uh, from this point on. So uh, whenever you update to the new version of plugins that do that, you're going to lose functionality. So talk to your clients, check your own sites, make sure that you are running on the latest PHP available to you. Um, you really should be running on in 7, 7.2. Uh, it would be just wonderful. 
but not everybody is able to do that right now. But please make sure that 5.6 is is out there. It is it is imperative now because it is no longer being supported by uh, by WordPress officially. Um, I see. Uh, I see. Yeah, uh, JL, you're right. Uncle Social made me <laughs> smile and laugh. It's uh, the eleventh birthday for my baby face. Uh, grow my stubble. That is actually why I grow the stubble out because I have a, a very round baby face and I look uh, ridiculous when I have absolutely no shadow here. But uh, but you're right. I see. Uh, I see everyone's talking about Brexit, so uh, that'll be that's something and. Uh, Let's see. Oh, Facebook didn't update. Uh, I see. Hi, Jack. Hi, Bruno. Uh, and from Togo. That's awesome. And uh, Iowa. Man, y'all are from everywhere. It just makes me happy. I was walking around the house just before this to get ready, and I was uh, thinking about all the places that you guys are from and how just how crazy it is uh, every Friday afternoon that we can get together and uh, and really do this. Uh, it, it's it's really awesome. From Peru here, Alfonso's there. It's just I love it. I love it so much. But that was the news. That was what was important this week. Um, you get a. You get the twenty uh, percent discount for from Elegant Themes, and uh, you're going to need to tell your clients or update your own sites and make sure that they're running at least PHP five point six. Excuse me, one sec. Uh, my mouth gets so dry. Now, moving into the tutorials, uh, I wanted to uh, point out. Uh, one that we put up on the uh, Elegant Themes blog, as I always want to call out some of the tutorials that uh, Jason and Donetta do. And Donetta's this week uh, that was published on the 15th was just awesome. It uh, It is how to create an entirely horizontal swipe page um, where you don't have any vertical scrolling. And I really, really liked this because one of the big annoyances that I've had lately is that I have very tiny hands. And so I have an iPhone XS Max and it's hard to actually do everything on the, on the phone. I got tiny hands. My thumb doesn't reach across. But with something like this, I like when I don't have to worry about scrolling up and down and I can just flick my finger to the side. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my goodness, more people need to be doing this uh, because it's so wonderfully useful when something is solely horizontal. Uh, so you have all of the content vertically and you don't have to worry about, uh, about managing to scroll and interact. It's great. Um, so it's... Uh, one of those tutorials, I, uh, I, I love it. Donetta always does good content. Y'all know her stuff is fantastic. And uh, it's a very easy to follow, very easy to follow tutorial as well. Um, <laughs> I see, I see that uh, in in the comments on YouTube, uh, everyone is uh, talking about folks from Iowa and brought up the uh, the Slipknot album Iowa. I had forgotten all about that, but I listened to that so much when it was new. I uh, my goodness, Denver, Colorado, everybody, I just love it. Um, so we also, I wanted to talk about, uh, I'd put in, we'd written an article, I'd written an article this week on how to choose the best fonts for logos. And the reason I include this one, I'm not get, like, I, I don't want to go that far into it, uh, but it's one where it is uh, making, I want you to think about things that you can actionably do uh, rather than just say, pick a clean font. Uh, there are specific things that you can look for and to uh, make sure that's, that aren't there, like overlapping serifs and things like that that make it really hard to read. Um, I see uh, the third one down. So y'all click into this. It's the third one down under tutorials. It is called Using Storytelling on product pages. And here's where the regulars are probably going to groan and be like, BJ is at it again. He's talking about storytelling and it's a Yoast article. Um, but I, 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 hmm, I saw this one and I have personally bought products because they have done things like this on the page. So as I was reading this article, it started out uh, talking about, like the, the blurb at the very beginning of it is, uh, Sue and John have a baby. His name is Jack. Jack's 10 weeks old and cry a lot. They get nervous of his crying. Da, 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 da. They're agitated. He's not sleeping. Uh, their friend gives them a present. It's a baby character, uh, a baby carrier, not a baby character, uh, supposed to help calm them. John decides to give it a try. Jack loves a character. He 
carrier, he relaxes, stops crying, falls asleep, and da 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 da. And that is the product description for a baby carrier. So that is how you use like the, the example that they're using of storytelling on product pages of how someone an, a, a real life use case for this particular uh, product. And this works very, very, very well on small business pages where you are building a relationship with the, with the people who run that page and the people who are, uh, all, who are making the product uh, along with the readers and the shoppers. If you can do that, if you run a page, you say, hey, this is the one that I got. I had, uh, I've done this on, on some of mine. I've bought stuff like this. But it's, uh, if you can say, hey, this is the kettlebell that I've used. I lost all of this weight and I gained you know, 400 pounds of muscle and now I'm, I'm nine feet tall because of this one. That's the kind of thing that will make someone buy a product uh, because it, uh, it is very, very personal. And the, the people want to, they don't want to be sold to anymore. The current generation of, of online shoppers does not want to be sold to. Um, there is an episode of that 70s show that has a salesperson of come around and helping somebody and going through and helping them decide on a product in a store. And it made me cringe when I was watching this uh, about a year ago because like, I don't want somebody to do that. I don't like it when somebody comes up to me in a store. It's like, I know what I want. I did the research online. And that's something that uh, that we don't have a lot of times is that personal connection of the, of the salesperson saying, hey, I use this one at home. Uh, I tried this other one. It doesn't work uh, nearly as well. And that's what this kind of product description can do if you allow it to. Um, they, uh, they go through a lot of stuff like this because it's showing, not telling. Um, you're showing, hey, this baby carrier puts the baby to sleep and relaxes it, as opposed to saying, this is 99% effective in all clinical trials. That is something that, uh, that is different and applies to and is trying to target a different demographic. And the big thing that this does as well on using the storytelling like this is that it focuses on the reader, it focuses on the customer, it focuses on you instead of the product itself. It's not saying, hey, you need this because it's so great. It's saying, hey, you need this because it can solve this problem for you and it makes it better. Um, and this doesn't have to be just on product pages. Think about this on your own websites, on your own uh, development pages and portfolios um, where you think about it if you gave a, a use case, a, hey, this is what happened with the last three clients that came in. They, they were using a local host, they were using uh, somebody, and they got viruses all the time. They're, they're, they have malware in their site. Uh, no one knew how to fix it, so they came to me. And every time uh, when they did this, I, I got them hooked up with uh, this host, with WordPress, with Divi, and I do a maintenance contract, and they have raised their revenue 13% since they've uh, made the swap. That kind of thing will guaranteed get you more customers when they read it because yes, it's tooting your own horn. Yes, it is self-promotion and you're you know giving a good example, but they see the process of what problems you solve for them. And that is invaluable instead of saying, hey guys, I'm great. Look how pretty Divi is. Like, this is wonderful. You need this, it, but you're, that doesn't say what problems that it's gonna solve. And if you can do that, um, it is it is awesomely effective. I see. Um, I see. Jazzy Bear Brown says uh, that use cases are the new benefits versus uh, just features, and that is absolutely right. Because as we move forward in all of these products, it uh, you, like you said uh, here on YouTube that uh, it has to feel alive to the audience. It has to. It has to make them uh, feel something uh, that it, that there is something dynamic that they need this because so many of the products that we buy now are very samey. They all do the exact same stuff, and so in order to to make that decision, there has to be something to set it apart, and it's that personal connection a lot of times. Um, and so, I mean, 
at elegant themes we truly believe that i mean with the live streams that we do getting to know you guys we really want this to feel like an organic product to you and and dynamic and alive that uh, that it solves the problems that you need um and i realize that some of you i know the comments are going to come in like uh talking about the headers and footers and uh and uh, the, the, the thumbnails and the gallery widgets. And I, I know there are, there are things that you need that we're working on, but I mean, that's what it is. You tell us and we have a conversation and we show you the problems that this new feature can solve instead of just saying, hey, it does this cool thing. Uh, you're absolutely right, Jazzy. Uh, but I really, really like this article. There's a lot more in there where it talks about collecting user stories uh, so that you can do that, inviting people to give reviews um, where the they uh, have their stories. Like Amazon reviews sell things, hands down. Uh, they will, if somebody tells, like writes a really good story on there and shows what that product did and how it was different from others, uh, that is, that is sold a lot. I wrote a review for a, for a, like a, it's called a fit desk. And uh, I wrote a very long review and, uh, because it was so good to me and it, uh, was one of the top reviews and sold a lot on there. And people had commented like, yeah, this is, and found it useful and things like that. And on my blog, they had commented about it. Um, but it was, uh, it's something that really does work. Uh, storytelling and product marketing and any marketing is where it is now. Um, Coach Fur uh, on YouTube mentions loving the new transitions and they're nice, aren't they? Uh, just everything. I'm loving the stuff that is coming out lately. Uh, just the, the team has been uh, unbelievably on top of things where my favorite is still the, the trans transformations uh, that came out that we were talking about last week. If y'all haven't tried out the new transformations, they are, they are beyond magnificent. They, uh, they are just, oh man, they're, they're so good. Um, I can't even say how good they are. Like they'll make your life better. They will straight up make your life better if you use those. So uh, moving forward beyond that, there is a, an, an, a one more Elegant Themes article I would like to, to point out on uh, creating your first digital marketing strategy because something that uh, people tend to not do is uh, take a step back from what you're doing. Like stop and pause and think and lay out the plan for your digital marketing as opposed to like, okay, I'm going to put some ads on Facebook. I'm going to pay for some, uh, some ads for uh, search engines. I'm going to do this and that. And you have a vague plan, but if you have a specific marketing strategy that you can keep track of and uh, like get your buyer persona and things like that, you will absolutely do better and Lindsay breaks it down she is a fantastic writer and has bro broken this down into like marketing media categories talking about where what, the ones you own um the ones you pay for the ones that you uh, that you earn like uh, media coverage that you get through pr efforts and things like that uh, sending out press releases just knocked this one out of the park i don't even know the word it is spectacular read that one um then uh, Velocitize has one just underneath it in the tutorials talking about uh, ways to boost your website's backlinks, which we always uh, need. Um, making use of social media profiles. Uh, the, you would be really surprised at how many people come in from a Twitter bio click. Like if you haven't updated your Twitter bio for your business uh, with a new link anytime soon, try it they're going to click that link if they're looking at your uh, your Twitter header. Um, you know, they talk about getting shareable content, which we know, uh, and finding ways to do that is, is really hard, which goes back to that digital uh, marketing strategy because you want to get it out there and you need to find a good way to do it, not just shout out into the night. Um, Uncle Social says that he's one of five people in the UK who graduated uh, with a degree in e-business uh, with digital marketing. Uh, that is crazy. Um, I cannot say I cannot say the uh, whole lot about uh, about. I just graduated with an English degree. It was huge, and everyone has one. Um, I see on Facebook that going back to the uh, to the previous one. Well, let me finish this, and then I'll go to that. Um, but that was. Getting guest posts was the other thing that they talked about. And 
this still works, that it feels to me, and I know it probably does to you too, that guest posting feels like it is a, it is very 2008, that that is where the internet was before the, the current boom and, and before everything shifted to where it is now and we moved mostly to social media. But guest posting really works. Uh, you will get, it's like guesting on a podcast or anything like that. Uh, you get new readers that you need the, uh, you get links to your site, which especially if that person is, uh, no following you or not no following you. And, uh, the people will click through and subscribe. Plus you're just going to get the click through from it. Like it is really good to get backlinks that way where even if it doesn't give you any link juice, it gives you traffic, which will then uh, generate more. Um, but going back, uh, Daryl Jordan on Facebook mentioned uh, when we were talking about storytelling, talks about uh, Donald Miller's book, Story Brand. Uh, he talks about storybrand.com. And uh, this is one that's new to me, um, that is workshops that uh, help you connect through storytelling. That is uh, really cool. Uh, talking about did your last marketing effort flop and uh, struggling getting new leads. And if you're having uh, trouble with uniting your staff, that uh, getting a story together uh, would be really helpful. So that is really cool, Daryl. Thank you. Uh, that one has not crossed my radar before. I see the, uh, I've got comments here. I need to look and see. I've got to read them. Uh, oh yeah. Uncle Social says he just onboarded a client whose uh, previous expensive SEO team created backlinks by adding uh, his site to spammy business directories. Um, and uh, they were partying like it was 2004. Um, yes. And that is terrible. Now, if you, if anyone out there is, is still considering doing that, or if you have, links in those kind of directories, go into your Google search console and disavow those links. There is a really good chance that the site's ranking will jump up if you do that because Google is penalizing people who have oodles and oodles and oodles. And that is the technical term of, of links from various directories, uh, basically that weren't earned. Oh, excuse me. Now, um, there's one uh, just below this that I thought most people would uh, would get, and it goes into that same thing of, of solving people's problems as opposed to presenting a service or a feature. And this one was from uh, WordExpress, and it's called The Biggest Pain Points of WordPress Website Owners and How to Fix Them. And... The primary reason that this one is in here for you guys is uh, just like uh, Uncle Social just said on YouTube, that onboarding clients, um, when you're doing that, you can know what kind of things to focus on so that you uh, make sure that you gain their trust and they see your expertise, that uh, no matter what they have, they're going to have problems with it. Even if you do the best that you can, they're still going to have some pain points uh, after that. And so it talks about website performance and plugin updates and management. Um, there are things like that they're going to come to you with in terms of disappearing web developers. Um, they've paid somebody and now they can't get in touch with them and their website works halfway. You're going to have to fix that. Um, migrating stuff that they don't know how to migrate from one place to another, uh, from one host to another, uh, just move it from one URL to the other. I don't want to say normal people. That's what I was about to say. Uh, typical web users don't have the expertise to do stuff like that, like we do. Um, it is It is a skill that we have learned. And so we need to remember sometimes that those things that we can do very, uh, that we've done a hundred times, uh, that those are still baffling to people and that that is a real pain point that they may come to you with. And if you haven't had that happen yet, 
it will happen because it's a major pain point. And uh, then they talk about uh, plug-in bloat uh, is a common issue. So if you're going into these talks and uh, tell them, I'm going to clean up your site, I'm going to speed it up, and I'm going to be able to remove, you know, you might have uh, 40, or, 40 or 50 plugins. I'm going to get that down to 12 or 13, uh, just essentials, and we're going to get everything worked out. Where that kind of thing takes a load off of their minds, because they are overwhelmed by the number of updates that there are. They don't know how to troubleshoot when something breaks. Uh, it's just too much. So those kind of things to keep in mind as you're onboarding uh, really can help. Um, I see on uh, YouTube that uh, JL Web Creative was asked, uh, this is going back to the, uh, to the SEO thing we were talking about with the web directories, um, I was asked to create 30 microsites all linking back to the main site. Um, so 2004, yeah. I mean, that kind of thing, that kind of thing worked for so long that if you make one of these micro networks that you could boost so much uh, just by having links back and forth through all of them and having just bare bones content. And now it is... I mean, it's money sometimes, and uh, that pays the bills. And if that's what they want and can't be talked out of it, that's what they want and can't be talked out of it. But as an expert, hopefully we're able to uh, to convince them of better ways to do uh, to do it. But that, yeah, very 2004 on that one. Um, and Coach Fur on YouTube uh, keep uh, told us to keep in mind Google's EAT, E A T, uh, expert authority and trustworthiness. Um, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Uh, sorry, your typo uh, made me say things wrong uh, because I can't read either. Um, but that's absolutely right. Uh, putting out the content that people are actually using for search intent, that's a big thing. Um, if you are ranking for the word donut and you're trying to... Uh, uh, and they're searching for how to make donuts and you're talking about going out in your front lawn and spinning your car around in circles. That's what uh, we here in Alabama call doing donuts. Uh, you're, if you're ranking for that, that's not what they're intending on that search. So Google will knock you down. Um, yes. So um, moving forward, let us see. Where did I want to go next? There is a Torque Mag article a little down. Um, <laughs> before we get to this, Uncle Social on on uh, YouTube says in the UK, donuts a colloquial insult, and apparently I am a massive donut, and I have never heard that, and I love it so much. <laughs> um, but the Torque Mag article a little bit below called uh, The Do's and Don'ts of Responsive Web Design is a, is a quick hit list of things that you need to make sure that you look at and refresh yourself on every now and then. Uh, the main reason being is because we get stuck in our ways and we have templates that we use and we just need to every once in a while uh, reconsider what we're doing and make sure we're following the right best practices. Um, they're talking about the do's of understanding how your site visitors actually use their mobile devices. Think about that for a second. You can have the prettiest site in the world, and it is it is wonderful, but if the users don't like using it, they're not going to. Um, you leave a site if the navigation is terrible. I mean, I do. It If that doesn't make sense, there are so many sites where I have to and I know this is a, a terrible, like, I don't even know. I, I want to say it's like that that first per, first world problem thing. But uh, I don't even think, I think it's beyond that even. It's like, when I have to press a button to find the search bar, that's ridiculous. It's like, that's one of those things that I don't understand the designer at that point. Because if I can't even find it, like even a uh, looking glass, then I won't, like... I'm not going to search around to be able to search on your site. It's ridiculous. And so they don't understand how people actually use these kinds of sites. And that's something that we have to do. Um, it was even like 
we were talking about with the advertising and digital marketing earlier with you have to know your audience, you have to know where they are, what they're doing. And this is one of them as well in making sure that you know how they're using their, uh, their mobile devices. Um, plan your layout first. Uh, make sure that your plugins actually work on mobile um, because sometimes they don't. Uh, sometimes your design that you thought looked really awesome might not work on mobile. Um, so if you plan it out ahead of time uh, and you don't just do what looks great on the computer here, you can, you know, you may have a thousand and one wonderful hover effects, but uh, if you, if 90% of your mobile users are, uh, are using it like using them if 90 percent of your website users are doing it on mobile devices then those that that is a bad design um talking about don'ts um don't fail to test third-party code uh please don't do this like please always test third-party code uh if you didn't write it yourself run it it does not matter if it's a plug-in who it's from whatever there is very likely even if you write it yourself uh if it does not come with the cms uh run it and make sure that it does not conflict with anything. Uh, don't clutter things up too bad. It says uh, don't skimp on negative space and don't hide your content. Uh, WordPress users um, and mobile users a lot, uh, like, just like me, they don't want to, to search for it and we don't want to try too hard. Uh, I know it sounds terrible to say it, but you guys are the same way. You don't want to try too hard when you are on your phone or on your tablet or even on your computer uh, and the content's just not there uh, because they, they've either gone too far in terms of trying to make it responsive or uh, or it's hidden when you're in the on mobile. It's just bad, and I will leave and never come back to a site like that. Uh, there have been a lot of comments here. Um, Along with content is king, uh, Uncle Social says uh, EAT or good words to live by um, has no analytical proof, but uh, I'm sure one good back backlink is worth dozens of poor quality ones. And uh, from everything I've read, you're absolutely right. Um, it is. I don't have any kind of uh, empirical evidence on it either, but I have actually read. Uh, I don't remember if it was from Yoast or somewhere. It was. A, Maybe a couple of months ago, I was reading about uh, when I was doing some articles on uh, no follow and do follow links that a good no follow link will do you better in terms of of traffic and revenue and search ranking than a than a lot than a handful at least of poor quality follow links. Um, the reason being that traffic is now taken into consideration by Google too, that, uh, that if no one's going there, why would they put it at the top of search rankings? So even if you're getting traffic from a no follow link, it can help raise ranking more than the, than the bad ones. Um, Yeah, Madalena says, uh, not sure if you need proof. It's uh, common sense. And uh, JL Web Creative on YouTube says, I've heard the term uh, that there is a, a one-click rule for UI UX, but I can't find much info on it. Um, I know the three-click rule, though. Um, is the three-click rule where uh, that is the absolute maximum before someone bounces? I've heard it, but I'm not sure um, if that's specifically what it is. Um I don't know if I've ever heard of the one-click rule, but I've heard of the one element per page. Like, don't expect someone to, on a mobile device, this is completely different elsewhere, uh, don't expect them to perform more than one task on a page. Uh, let them... Uh, which is different than login forms. We talked about it before. You want to be able to put your, because login is one task. Uh, you don't want to separate it between, but like moving from shopping page to shopping cart to checkout, everything should have one thing on the page because otherwise it gets hard to navigate on mobile. Um, I've seen stuff like that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, tell, tell me about the three click rule because I'm always looking for different things like that. I know that there is a certain number of, uh, uh, clicks basically that uh, has a severe drop off that people just get frustrated. It's like, I'm not going through this anymore. And I see on, on Facebook, Luis asks, uh, for those of you on YouTube uh, as well, uh, to be able to answer this and help. 
Uh, do you have any good advice to someone who is trying to start a job uh, doing websites with WordPress? Um, and I'm sure there's a ton of advice out there. So if you guys want to hop in on Facebook uh, and answer that, uh, or uh, uh, I can, uh, you know, y'all know I do my best to relate as well. Um, Luis, the main uh, thing that I did was <laughs> take any job that came uh, came forward. Um, I uh, My counselor told me not to, uh, and, and it was really good advice on not to think I was too good to take any job and that if I wanted to work and eat to take, uh, to, to prepare myself to take whatever came. And that worked really well for me. Like when uh, somebody uh, needed, uh, needed this, like, yeah, sure, I can do that. Uh, somebody recommended, like, yep, be a yes man for a little while. Um, my experience was getting a lot of local people first um, by, by going to meetups and things like that in my local area, I was able to meet other developers. I just went to meetup.com and saw if there were any, uh, computer or WordPress or actually at the time it was Ruby, uh, development, uh, groups in my area met these other developers. And even though none of them actually got me a job, they would re recommend me to other people. Like we could talk back and forth and talk about people in town who might need something. Uh, and so I would be, was able to make those connections so that when somebody heard something, they would pass a job along to me. Um, word of mouth really got my first year of, uh, of freelancing. I never did. I'm the one freelancer in the entire world who never had a dry streak uh, before I found uh, full time employment. Um, it uh, was awesome because people would talk to one another uh, and recommend. Like it when you hear the cliche that uh, word of mouth is the best advertising. It is um, meetup and stuff like that are great. Looking on job boards um, is also really, really good, but they need to be quality. Um, I like flex jobs and then jobs.problogger.com, uh, things like that. Um, there are different Divi uh, Facebook groups that you can get in um, that where people are posting on it. There's one, um, I think, called Divi Freelancers. Um it's Divi Freelance or something. So if that's, uh, they talk about uh, getting jobs and jobs are posted there all the time. Um, those kind of things are great. But the number one piece of advice that I have to you is do not work for free. Please don't work for free. You have a skill doing this, that you can do this. The fact that you are able to start a job doing websites with WordPress that means you have a skill. Please don't let somebody talk you out of taking money for it. Um, taking payment. I shouldn't even say taking money for it. Um, at, when you're starting out, it might be good to barter services, um, to, to be able to get a logo design for something or, uh, or anything like that. Uh, get them to bake you a really good cake. Uh, whatever it is, get compensated because that is the uh, number one way to, to move forward as a professional and not devalue yourself too much. Um, I see uh, William Patton on YouTube, Luis, says, uh, my advice as a freelance web developer for 10 years, uh, do more work or uh, charge more for your time. Uh, that is that is absolutely true. We've mentioned that in the past here. Um, don't be afraid of charging what you're worth. Um, people will not think you are... I'm, I'm trying to think. That's why I sound kind of funny. People will not think anything about you overcharging because that's your rate. Uh, they understand that you have a skill. Um, there are freelancers that we all know who are making uh, 80 to $150 an hour. Um, so don't charge 20. You have a skill and it is objectively worth more than that. Um, that is that that's one of the earliest pieces of advice I got was uh, don't charge too low uh, because if you charge low amounts, then that is an indication of the quality of work that you do. And that makes you seem less professional, less good at it. 
even if you're not, you may be, Luis, the best web designer that I'll have ever seen. But if you're charging $15 uh, an hour, I'm probably not going to go with you because I'll think that, uh, that you're an amateur. Which is, there's nothing wrong with being an amateur, but when you're a professional, present it, um, and you will be able to, uh, to get that. Um, Uncle Social says, if you don't assign value to your work, no one else will either. Uh, plus, they'll think you're not very good if you're just giving it away for free. Uh, reiterate that. Um, and if you need to build, a, build up a portfolio fast, do a site for your agency, a personal site for yourself, uh, maybe help a local charity for free or do one uh, heavily discounted for them, that is, is a really good uh, piece of advice on uh, especially charity. Um, if you're a, Charities can generally not pay a lot. If you are looking to start out and uh, you want to work with nonprofits or charities, don't expect to make a lot of money because they they don't they just simply don't have it to to pay. But if you can get a good site because of the way that those organizations work and how connected they are, you will get more work because you uh, you did that work for them because people will see that site constantly. Uh, and when somebody, somebody who is interacting with that uh, organization says, hey, uh, you know, your new website looks really great, and like, yeah, this guy did it, uh, that would, uh, would really work in your favor. Um, I had, in my portfolio, I had stuff that uh, I had done that, honestly, I needed I needed something in my portfolio that I look back now I was like man I was not very good at that uh, because I've learned but the fact that you have those in your portfolio is what matters that you have things that you're not ashamed to put up uh, that you've made for yourself uh, um, make websites uh, like like they said and uh, William on YouTube says uh, charities are networking gold mines and they absolutely are. Uh, my wife works for a public library, and it's that way. Uh, and her being on boards uh, for various nonprofits has landed me jobs like uh, different and connections and things like that around town uh, just because they're charity uh, nonprofit stuff. Like it is absolutely there. Um, but yeah, if anybody else has any other uh, other advice, throw it in on Facebook or on YouTube, and I'll relay it. Um, good luck with that, Luis. I hope that that uh, that helps a little bit, and uh, I am I am very happy for you to be able to start that because it was terrifying when I started. It is very uh, scary to make that jump of doing this kind of thing professionally. Um, but if you are able to get it going and uh, and just taking that leap, then uh, it is. It is wonderful, and uh, I'm very, very happy for you to be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, um, moving on just a little bit. Uh, we have uh, about 15 minutes left on the stream, give or take. And they, uh, they, I don't know who they is. Um, my thoughts. When I, I, I was thinking about that and a hundred other things. Um, Cats Who Code has a, the very last one under tutorials. Cats Who Code has an article called Eight Tips for Improving Contact Form Conversions. And I, everybody needs this. Uh, the number one thing on here that I want to do, this, and it's number one. I say the number one thing, but it is the top of the list. Change your button copy. You will be amazed at how different button copy, what the words actually on the button and the copy above the button, how that uh, will actually change people's uh, submission and conversion rates. Um, don't use submit. Submit is the absolute worst thing to put on there because people ignore it. People, they're used to that. Um, even the, the just as simple but more direct, they say, send message. Um, I think I have one somewhere, I don't even remember which side it is, that just says, say hi on a contact form. Uh, instead of submit, it just says, say hi. And you know what? I've had people who have just emailed me to say hi because of it. Um, that kind of thing works if you're trying to get uh, any kind of conversion out of the form, uh, specifically contact, um, like, hey, get your quote now, uh, say hi, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, they will. Um, so change that button text and the stuff right beside it. 
uh, really matters too because uh, people do read what's around forms uh, because they want to know what's going on um, most of the time. Make sure that it's simple. Do not overdo it. Nobody wants to fill out a complicated form. We have to do our taxes, and that is the, the longest, most complicated form that we can do. Nobody wants to fill out, fill out the same thing on your side. Uh, talking about be transparent, uh, GDPR means that we have to tell what information we collect. GDPR means that we have to tell about what information we collect, what we do with it, everything. Just let people know. Put your privacy policy on there. If you don't, and don't collect anything that you don't need. Um, my conversions went up for a new email list I started literally the day that I took the first name field off of it. Uh, I thought people would want that so that I could personalize emails and actually reach out to the people and, uh, and get to know them. Nope, they did not. They just wanted to put their email address in and go. That's fine. I didn't need their first name until after we had done the giveaways and stuff like that. So don't ask for anything that you don't need. Do you need their home address right then? No. Uh, when they're signing up, do you need their phone number? Well, you might if it's a party planning business or something like that. But for whatever else it is, no, their email will work. If you don't need it, don't ask for it, and it will increase your conversions. Um, make it snappy, test compatibility, uh, put it in a different spot on the page, move it up higher, and um, excuse me, provide value is one of them on here that you don't see a lot on lists like this, where uh, what are they getting if they fill out this form? Have you ever thought about that? Like, what do they get for uh, contacting you? Like, what benefit does it have for them to take the time out of their day to fill out whatever form that they have? Um, the uh, giving them a free uh, ebook, I've done that. It works really well. Um, f exclusive features on the side if you're getting signups for something. Um, whatever it is, if they if they send you a contact message and you say you you'll read uh, certain messages on your podcast. People will do it that way. But whatever it is, they need to feel as though they're not just doing this at your whim. Uh, people are selfish and we like stuff. Uh, so, so that's something that I'd never thought about in terms of form submission before, but it does help conversion when you have something. Um, the new email list I was talking about a second ago, ours is having monthly giveaways. So if they do that, and sign up that they are passively entered for every uh, like video game giveaway and stuff like that that we do uh, from here on out. Um, and they get emailed our content as well. So they're getting something in return for being sent a copy of our content, stuff like that. Um, so I liked it uh, when they got to that point. So Katsu Code really nailed it on that one. I see that... Uh, uh, Uncle Social says a GDPR. I don't ask for it if you don't need it. You're not Mark Zuckerberg. And William says, I always say to my clients, if you're comfortable telling people uh, what to do, uh, excuse me, if you aren't comfortable telling people what you do with it, then don't collect it. And that is absolutely right. Um, it is, uh, man, that is right. If you're if you uh, if you're selling their phone numbers to call banks and you're embarrassed about that, then maybe you shouldn't be getting their phone numbers. Uh, good point, William. That is a, that's a great, uh, a great line, and I am pretty sure that somebody watching this is going to steal that uh, if it's not me and somebody else. Uh, so, the, uh, so, yeah. Um, as we're moving into the, uh, the last, uh, last leg of the show, uh, moving into the resources, uh, if you've joined in late or uh, you're just joining us or you've joined us for the first time, um, remember that you can always start back at the beginning of the show and go through the news and tutorials uh, and discussions that we've had uh, on the archive, on the YouTube channel when this uh, stream finishes, and on the Facebook page. Um, so moving into the resources, excuse me, the number one thing, the uh, WP Shout posted an article today from the Chronicle of Higher Education, and uh, it it when I saw this this morning... Um, and the the old the article is a little older, but this is just when I saw the uh, the WP shout post about it was was called "Is Email Making Professors Stupid?" And 
of course, having taught college for a while, I'm going to click into any headline that says that. Um, and as it goes through, it's a very, very interesting article about how email is simplifying things too much and uh, potentially uh, creating, uh, not letting us have enough pathway, like impeding our cognitive capabilities uh, and diminishing the uh, quality of the work that we do because things are uh, so quick and fast and just right here. It is incredibly interesting. It is very long, like most Chronicle uh, articles are, but if you have never read the Chronicle of Higher Education and uh, are interested in tech and education at all like this, it is uh, super, super cool. Um, I, I used to read the Chronicle a bunch, and uh, uh, Coach Fur on YouTube says that uh, the headline got you to click, <laughs> ding, ding, success, and it did. I mean, it was an immediate thing, too. It was like, yep, that is uh, that is going to get me to click. It was clickbait of the best kind, and I was so happy, too. I was so happy when I clicked it, and it linked through to a Chronicle of Higher Education post. It was like it wasn't linking to something that was like... Uh, just some vapid uh, think piece that's not really a think piece. It was an actual uh, scholastic professorial article about uh, the current state of uh, technology and education. And it was like, yeah, this is exactly what I love. Uh, so I think that you guys will get the same, uh, same kind of excitement out of it uh, if you're as nerdy as I am. Um, so... That one was good. Uh, there are also a lot of others. A lot of others down here. Smashing Magazine uh, went through an entire day on Internet Explorer eight. Just read it. It is incredibly uh, fun. They they've done a lot of these uh, doing things like with screen readers and accessibility for a day to to if you've never done that to find out what it's like. And this one's using Internet Explorer eight, so it's pretty cool. And Code NWP, uh, two down from that, says, what's the difference from a practical point of view in UI versus UX? And these things get used interchangeably all the time, and they are not the same, y'all. UI and UX are not the same. Now, what is the real difference here? User interface is UI. That is actually, legitimately, genuinely, the buttons that people press on your page. It is the interface that they are interacting with. Whatever is in front of them is the interface, right? That's all it is. User experience, UX, is how you use that interface. That if you're not using, like, if someone has... Like we were talking about earlier with mobile responsive sites, that site where I had to press the button uh, to open up and find a search box, that is b a bad interface that gave me a bad user experience. I didn't have a bad UI. I mean, I didn't design that. The site has that interface regardless, but it was my experience as a user that actually made it bad. Um, there was too much friction uh, between me and what I wanted to do, uh, which we've talked about before. Um, they, uh, JL Web Creative says good UI equals good UX, and you are 100% right that if you do a good UI, if you put a good user interface together, then the user experience is going to be great. Um, it is... It's something that Apple got right uh, very early on, even if you're not an Apple fan, even if you're not the kind of person who uses a Mac or uses an iPhone, they understood what they were doing. The UI was intuitive. It, uh, it just worked, and people knew how to use it, and they didn't complain about it. That They had a good experience. That's the whole thing. Um, I've had a lot of complaints from uh, my wife and other people who haven't used Android whenever they picked up my note. I mean, like, ah, this is just close enough to iPhone that I can't use it. Um, and that's true. Doesn't mean it's a bad UI, but they were having a bad user experience from coming from another one. So there needs to be an intermediary step there somehow uh, to, to do that. Um, 
and Coach Fur says, uh, and don't settle. Uh, if you know it doesn't work or you don't like it, fix it. Um, yeah. Uh, that is sometimes that's harder to do with clients, but if you can convince them uh, to do to do something for the better, it is going to be worth it in the end. Um, William Patton uh, pretty much puts the William Patton is on fire today, y'all on YouTube. Um, he uh, he says I'm not an Apple fan at all. Um, but they defined what it meant to be a smartphone, and we all benefit from that. Um, yes, they they did really well. They done they done good with the uh, with the UI and UX, and it did. They made the smartphone. I went from a Palm Trio to an iPhone Generation One, and the interface was so different that the experience was mind blowing. Uh, that I would never, like, from a stylus, like, tactile touchscreen running Palm OS it, to iOS 1, yeah, better UI led to a better user experience. So, with that, you guys, we are out of time, and I really and truly appreciate you being here. I've had a wonderful time. I hope that you guys have gotten something out of this. There are a lot more links down in the description of this video. So if you follow along uh, and open up the description, you'll be able to see all of those on uh, things like managing multiple WordPress sites from one uh, dashboard, um, what customers expect out of customer service, um, even a look at Toolset if you've never used Toolset. Uh, things like that. So make sure that you click through and give those content creators love. They do such good work. Um, and make sure that you ring the bell on YouTube and subscribe so that you know when we go live again. And on Facebook, there is a way to tell it uh, that you want to know when we go live again. And that is uh, by... I think it's near the it's where the follow thing is, and it's like notify about uh, when the site when this page goes live because we do go live multiple times a week. Mac is always on uh, Monday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern time, and Jason Ordonetta is on Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I do realize when I say morning and noon, that is to uh, to me, and so that is very different for some of you. But uh, 6 a.m. Eastern on Monday. 3 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday and 3 p.m. Eastern on Fridays for me. Um, you guys are fantastic. Uh, good luck with everything this week. Uh, good luck, Luis. I hope that the uh, that the WordPress freelancing goes well. And uh, it was good to uh, get to know some uh, new people and uh, get to uh, talk to you today. I hope that uh, you have a great week, and I will see you next Friday. Bye, everybody.